Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends, this is the second lecture on equality and today we are going to discuss very briefly what we have left in the previous lecture about the idea of equity, egalitarianism and its relationship with equality. So we will briefly discuss that and then finally today we will focus on the idea of equality of opportunity and also what we call preferential treatment or affirmative action. So, in Indian context, it is largely known by the name of quota or reservation for the disadvantaged groups and communities. So, in the second part of today's lecture, we are going to discuss basically the idea of preferential treatment and how it is justified in the name of creating a society which is more equal, more egalitarian and so on. So, so uh, in the previous lecture on equality, we have discussed different kinds of equality such as uh, legal and political equality, socio-economic equality, equality of welfare, equality of resources and equality of capabilities. These three major approach about equality of what? Even when we agree to the concept that we need equality, then the next question is equality of what? And there is this three major approaches to address these questions equality of what that is equality of welfare, equality of resources and equality of capabilities as in Amart Sin we have discussed. Then finally we have also discussed the complex equality about which we discussed Michael Walger and different spheres uh, which he was talking about which uh, ultimately will lead a kind of inbuilt mechanism to counter or to restrict any forms or any sections of domination over the other sections. In the last part of the introductory lecture on equality, we have also discussed this idea of equity and egalitarianism. This idea again we will discuss in today's lecture before we move on to discuss what is equality of opportunity and also the idea of preferential treatment or what we call reservation. So, equality of opportunity is more desirable than equality of outcome. Now, uh, this two term is something which we need to and will come again in the course of our lecture today. This idea of equality of opportunity in contemporary discourse on equality is more desirable than equality of outcome. So, the reason for equality of opportunity being more desirable than equality of outcome is that the equality of outcome in its attempt to equalize is unfair to those who are different because not of their natural or their socio-economic circumstances, but their differences in status, socio-political or economic is because of their choice or hard work. So, inequality that result out of these hard work or the personal choices that individual makes in his or her life, the equality of outcome approach tends to undermine or undervalue such hard works or the personal choices. And therefore, many theorists have argued that it is better to have equality of opportunity than to focus more and more about equality of outcome, which talks about the end result or making everyone equal. So, uh, it is unfair for those who are different because of their choice or hard work and therefore many supporters of equality argue for equality of opportunity and do not consider inequality as necessarily bad. So, for them the inequality in itself is not bad. 
so uh, what the focus is on the idea of equality of opportunity that means and we will discuss what this idea of equality of opportunity is but basically it talks about giving everyone equal opportunity to progress to develop himself to make certain choices now in doing that there is all of course the element of redistribution of resources especially uh, those who are from disadvantaged section but nonetheless uh, the idea is to give everyone the same uh, level of opportunity to excel and to pursue his or her ambitions now in the pursuit of such ambitions or choice if there is some inequality then that inequality is acceptable and it is not bad in itself so for uh, the supporters of equality of opportunity inequality is not necessarily bad if it is result of one's choice and hard work however if such inequalities are result of some natural endowments or socio economic conditions then such endowments or conditions of inequalities are bad and must be rectified by the intervention of the state so uh, they also argue for redistribution of resources to ensure that everyone has the same level of playing field or equal opportunity but that should not uh, determine the end result in a sense uh, that due respect or acknowledgement should be given to the individual choice and the hard work which creates inequality and that inequality is not bad in itself so to create this uh, equality of opportunity in many society there are provisions for preferential treatment or affirmative actions so in india it is also known as quota system or reservation such treatments are justified in the name of equality and are meant for those who are both historically as well as socio economically from the disadvantaged sections of the society so this difference from equal treatment or equality of opportunity to give some kind of preferential treatment or reservation or quota is justified only when uh, it is uh, for those who are historically and in contemporary times socio economically from the disadvantaged groups so the overall uh, objective here in the discourse on inequality is that everyone should be given free and equal opportunity if there is some difference that needs to be made then that difference is justified on the basis of historical disadvantages and also the socio economic disadvantages uh, uh, and that alone justified some kind of difference some kind of preferential treatment and affirmative action that we will discuss so now if we briefly discuss this point about equity and egalitarianism and its relationship with equality this is from the previous lecture we have had so equity as a term is more related and as i have discussed in my previous lecture that in the contemporary discourse on equality the absolute equality as an ideal is neither desirable nor possible to realize so it's a kind of gradual progressive process which uh, may lead to more and more kind of equal and egalitarian society so the uh, rallying point is more about equity and egalitarianism and equity in that sense refer to terms like fairness or justness or impartiality so the other political value that is intimately connected with the ideals of equality is justice or liberty now the relationship between liberty and equality we will discuss in the next lecture but justice or the idea of fairness or just treatment or equal treatment is something which is deeply connected with the moral political legal and socio economic conceptions of uh, equality and we'll again discuss this point when we will discuss uh, the idea of justice particularly justice as fairness in john rawls so um, equity as a term is more related to terms like fairness justness or impartiality it is different from equality which focuses on treating everyone equally so uh, that's a kind of more broader abstract 
ideal of equality which wants everyone to be treated equally. But absolute equality and we have discussed equality is not equal to uniformity. That means same level of income, same kind of house, same approach to uh, good life uh, or regimentation of uh, life and so on. So, the better um, approach to achieve equality is not the absolute equality or abstract equality, but the principle of equity which is different from the equality. And egalitarianism is much broad. So, equity in that sense includes certain principles of um, having a different approach uh, to diverse sections of society. So, maybe one of the visuals you have seen in the um, say uh, cricket match or a football match where different people are watching the match and there is some kind of obstructions here. Now, if the same level of standing bench is provided to them, the outcome of it will not be really just because those who are shorter or those who are in the middle and those who are taller, they have the same level of standing position, but their enjoyment or their visual of match vary depending upon their natural, physical, biological body. So, the equality uh, principle will provide that let us give the same level of standing position to everyone. Now, the equity requires that those who are those who are shorter, they should be given more, those who are in the middle, they should be given more, those who are too tall, they should be little less. So, the equity principle requires a kind of differential treatment to ensure that everybody should have the same level of enjoyment, same level of playing field or same level. So, there is a kind of slight difference between the idea of equality and the idea of equity to ensure the equality in the outcome and everyone should have the same level of playing field. Now, egalitarian in comparison to that is much broader a term and it regards equality as the central moral ideals by which it means substantive equality in the conditions of people's life that is much more than merely political or legal equality. So, egalitarianism is something much broader than uh, merely the formal notion of equality in the sense of political and legal equality. It talks about the actual conditions of individual living and how uh, that uh, conditions of living is equal to the rest of the community. So, it means equality in the sense of having opportunities that are open to them, resources which is available to them or the quality of life that is of equal moral worth to the rest of the members in the community. So, the egalitarianism as a more broader ideal is not just about political and legal equality, but it talks about achieving or realizing the conditions where opportunities are available to everyone, resources are available to every section of the society and also uh, the quality of life that one leads is of same moral worth than the rest of the members in the community. So, the egalitarianism um, is much broader a term than say uh, equity or uh, equality. Nonetheless, these are also overlapping and equality is at the center of uh, uh, egalitarian um, political philosophy. So, there are broadly speaking three kinds of egalitarianism, which is intrinsic, instrumental and constitutive. So, in, intrinsic egalitarianism is an ideal which believes that equality is good in itself. So, there is no further justification for equality. So, for uh, those who believe in the intrinsic egalitarianism, for them equality is good in itself. So, you can compare here with the Kantian idea of uh, categorical imperative. So, uh, there some course of action is good in itself. It does not require any uh, justification from outside or external uh, justification or achieving certain ends. Here, uh, in the similar manner, 
the intrinsic egalitarianism believes that equality is something which we must defend, not because it leads to something else, but because it is good in itself. So, that is how they want to uh, construct the society or transform the society to build a future society and so on. Now, for the instrumental egalitarians, the ideal of equality is justified not because it is good in itself, but it help in ensuring something more. And these something more are, for example, universal freedom, free development of human capacity and personality without coercion or domination or for coherence in the society. So, for the instrumental egalitarianism, equality is required not because equality is good in itself, but it helps in creating or realizing some other ideals or values such as universal freedom, free development of individual personality or individual growth without any coercion and domination or a society which is uh, more coherent, more uh, strong when there is less inequality and more people have then uh, social ties which create a society which is much more coherent than a society which uh, huge inequalities and uh, disparities. The final uh, constitutive egalitarianism focuses on creating an equal society. So, here it should be basically egalitarianism. Constitutive egalitarianism focuses on creating an equal society because certain inequalities are unfair and unjust. So, there is the moral uh, value involved here. They want to create a society which should be equal because certain inequalities are morally unfair or unjust. So, in this sense, it is uh, based on higher value such as equal dignity and respect for each individual. So, the other values are higher values are very significant in this conception of egalitarianism which talks about constitutive egalitarianism where the dignity and the respect of each individual is of same moral worth or same uh, significance. Finally, in uh, one form of egalitarianism that is called luck egalitarianism, this we will discuss in the next lecture. This is also a form of egalitarianism which we will discuss in the next lecture. So, now we come to today's topic of equality of opportunity. So, uh, this uh, equality of opportunity is in a way an attempt to avoid the excessive uh, focus either on equality of welfare or equality of resources and the inherent tensions or contestations that is involved in such conceptualizations of what to be distributed or distributed, uh, what should be the criteria for such redistribution, should we have a one singular universal parameters for redistribution or we should take into account different needs of different individuals or different groups and so on. So, equality of opportunity as a principle tries to avoid the pitfalls of both the equality of resources or equality of uh, welfare. It includes the aspect of choice or responsibility. So, more than this distributional aspect of equality, the equality of opportunity bring in the value of individual choice and responsibility in determining the status of the individual in the society. So, to create an equal society, the equality of opportunity includes the aspect of choice and individual responsibility. So, it permits inequality in outcome if that is the result of individual autonomous choice or ambition. So, so long the inequality is the result of individual choice or hard work or innovation that is perfectly justified or acceptable. However, it argues for equalizing the outcomes in so far those are result of circumstances 
beyond individual controls in such cases it argues for the role of a state and public institution to provide equal opportunity to everyone so one of the issue that we have discussed in the previous lecture is about equality of capabilities so equality of capabilities require the state to ensure that individuals are not just uh, given the resources but also their capabilities are enhanced and to enhance their capabilities to uh, primary good or to basic uh, need that they require is the literacy or good literacy or good health that ensure that they can enjoy they can participate in a more free or equal manner so uh, here in the similar way uh, when the in differences or uh, when the inequalities or disparities are result of not individual choice or hard work or responsibilities but because of their circumstances of living or the conditions of living then in that case equality of opportunity principles also recognize or acknowledge the role of a state and institution to ensure that everyone should have the equality of opportunity so in equality of opportunity what matter is not the socio economic and other kinds of background of the individual but his or her talent or skill so talent or skill or the individual innovation is something which must be rewarded and if the inequality is result of such individual talent and skills that is perfectly justifiable for those who argue for equality of opportunity so in order to understand this concept of equality of opportunity we also need to differentiate between equal access on the one hand and equality of outcome on the other so equal access imply that public offices or public spheres or public positions of power or responsibilities should be open or accessible to one and all and that should be based on the merit or their capabilities and not on the basis of certain discriminatory practices either on the basis of caste class gender race and so on so uh, the equal access basically focuses on this idea of public offices or spheres or positions should be made available for everyone and that should be based only on the criteria of merit or qualification so the equality of opportunities much more uh, different than merely equal access to public position so equal access is about once the, some individuals or a group of individuals uh, should compete with a public uh, office which is uh, ideally available for all of them depending upon their merit or qualification so those who uh, have the qualification for that position will get that position that means the only criteria to be accessible to a public office or public position is the merit or qualification and not the caste class gender or religion and so on so the equality of access principles argue about uh, making public offices accessible to everyone now whether that ability or capability to access that office is available to every individual in the same way is not something that equal access principles bothered about however the equal opportunity principles argue that it is not just enough to keep public offices open or accessible for everyone but also to ensure that individual get the opportunity to develop or acquire capability or talent to access that office so in that sense equal opportunity principle is much broader than merely the equal access principle the second is equality of outcome that focuses on the end result in doing so it overlooks or ignore the individual efforts or the choices that an individual makes in his or her life in other words it tends to treat someone who value lesser at par with someone who believe in the hard work or diligence so the equality of outcome tries to equalize between two set of individuals one who believe in the hard work or the diligence and the other who believes in the um leisure or taking life easily uh, taking life casually and so on so this kind of um, equality of outcome principles are 
morally arbitrary in that sense. So, therefore, we have more emphasis in the literature on equality of opportunity than either on equality of access or equality of outcome. So, the basic ideal that defines equality of opportunity is that skills and talent matters and state and public institution must ensure that the equal chance to acquire this relevant competence, skill, talents or qualification are available to everyone. So, in this sense, inequality per se is not seen as bad. So long, it is the result of one's talent or choices. So, the equality of opportunity principles reward or acknowledge the principle of skills or talents which leads to some forms of inequalities in, in the society. So long that inequalities and disparities is result of individual choice, merit or talent, it is acceptable or permissible. But if those disparities or inequalities is result of certain conditions which is beyond individual control, such as caste based hierarchy or hierarchy on the basis of one's birth or birth in a community which is in the minorities, ethnic or racial or religious minorities and so on. So, in that sense, it is the responsibility of the state to ensure that they uh, get to participate in the public life of the community at par with the other uh, members in the other privileged members in the society. However, this excessive focus on equality of opportunity may result in the huge disparities in the society. In such a society, talented elite dominate every sphere of life. So, those who are technocrats or good in some skills, they may create a group within the society which dominates every sphere of life. And they also made others relatively not as advantaged or privileged. Uh, uh, a kind of self pity or it may not serve the purpose of social cohesiveness or social equality or egalitarianism. So, uh, this talented elite dominate then every sphere of life and disadvantaged or poor are deemed to have failed because of their own personal choices, deficiencies or lack of talent. So, this kind of excessive reliance on this equality of opportunity principle may create a society where a few or minority of talented elites may dominate every sphere of life and those who are disadvantaged may be uh, told or may be seen they are disadvantages because not the structural or the conditions of their existence which is beyond their control but because they lack their own personal choices, personal talent or personal deficiencies. Therefore, John Rawls argue that people no more deserve their native abilities including their propensity to hard work than they do those advantages gained from their family and social backgrounds. And therefore, in his conception of justice, he also focused on the difference principle. So, he wanted equality of opportunity made available to everyone, but also there should be a difference, especially if such differences is in the advantage of those who are worst off. So, uh, this principle of difference uh, or difference principle of justice, we will discuss again when we will discuss uh, John Rawls conception of justice as fairness. But here it is important to note that um, equality of opportunity, if we focus exclusively on that, may create a society with huge disparities or inequalities. And in that society, only a few or minority of uh, individuals with talent dominate every sphere of life. And the rest of the society may be seen as lacking in uh, talent or they are disadvantages because of their personal uh, deficiencies or lack of talent and so on. And that uh, do not create a society which will be more cohesive 
So, uh, we need to uh, balance uh, this excessive reliance on equality of opportunity to also include the principle of difference depending upon the requirements of especially disadvantaged sections of society. However, theorists like Ronald Dworkin or David Miller questions this premise of John Rawls, which according to them goes against the fundamental tenets of John Rawls theory that focuses on desert, choice and responsibility. So, Ronald Dworkin articulates a somewhat radical conception of equality of opportunity and he wants people to start with the same level of or equal resources. So, the starting point should be of same level of or equal resources and that same level or equal resources require the intervention from the state to compensate those people who are naturally disabled or uh, lack uh, talent. And then they should be left free to pursue their choices and ambitions in free market with minimum role of the state. So, Ronald Dworkin further conceptualize this principle of equality of opportunity by arguing that individuals should start with the same level of resources. And if there is inequalities of resources that is available to individual, a state has a role to redistribute the resources, so that everyone should start with the same level of resources. Then once they have the same level of resources, what they do, what choices they make uh, and how they pursue their ambitions, that should be left with the individuals to participate in the free market uh, economy with a minimal role of the state. And if the disparities or inequalities is result of the individual choice, despite having same level of resources or same level of a starting point, that kind of disparities and inequality is perfectly justified according to Dworkin. Now, not all liberal theorists defend this principle of equality of opportunities. For example, defenders of free market liberal economy such as Frederick uh, Haig argues that some redistribution of wealth or resources are desirable or can be justified. However, any attempts to completely remove the inequalities of opportunity is doomed to failure because in their opinion too much of equality including equality of opportunity tends to undermine the social and economic condition that is required for innovation and progress. So, the uh, motivation for individual to innovate or to put extra effort or to do hard work will be unavailable if uh, there is too much emphasis on creating uh, equality or providing the same level of resources to everyone. So, they uh, somewhat uh, considered the excessive focus on creating the equality of opportunity or equality in the society in general, it may be detrimental to individual innovation and hard work. And therefore, uh, we have many liberal uh, free market economic supporters who uh, not necessarily justify this idea of creating freedom of um, uh, equality or equality of opportunity because for them that give the state and public institution to regulate to interfere in the individual lives excessively and that is detrimental for individual motivation or individual um, efforts which is required for the society as a whole to move forward. So, there will be some individual which will uh, be more innovative than the rest and it is because of those individual society overall progress from one stage of development to the next. And if we focus excessively on the equality, then the chances are the individual may not be uh, motivated enough to take risk or to make certain innovations and so on. So, to the reward, the inequalities is somewhat uh, required also for the overall progress of the society. So, so uh, basically many liberal free market economists do not necessarily 
focus on the absolute um, eradication of inequality in opportunity. So, now the second part of our lecture where we will discuss this idea of preferential treatment of affirmative action. So, this is the mechanism which basically goes against the fundamental idea of equality which believes in treating everyone equally. It is based on this difference principle especially for those who have been suffering from both historical as well as the socio-economic inequalities especially uh, such as ethnic, racial or religious minorities, women, Dalits and so on. So, this term preferential treatment or affir affirmative action is used interchangeably and there are many terms that is related to this uh, mechanism which is also known as reverse discrimination or positive discriminations in India we call it also quota and reservation. So, this whole conception of preferential treatment or affirmative action operates somewhat between the idea of equality of opportunity and equality of outcome. So, to create a society which will not be absolutely equal, but it must be more equal and less un unequal or there should be less disparities on the one hand. And all the individuals in the society should have same or equal opportunity to excel or to progress. The idea of preferential treatment or affirmative action operates somewhat in between these two kind of uh, approaches to create a equal society. One which talks about equality of opportunity, the other which talks about equality of outcome. Preferential treatment operates somewhat in between these two approaches of creating an equal society. Now, there are various types of affirmative action. One is the encouragement. Through encouragement, one can also create a society which will prefer especially those who are from the disadvantaged background. So, how one can encourage those who are disadvantaged? So, one of the example is to make them aware by advertising in those newspapers which is read by uh, disadvantaged groups or ethnic minorities and so on. So, through encouragement one can also extend preferential treatment to certain communities especially if they are from the disadvantaged groups or communities. The second is the tie breaking which is basically when there is two individual with same level of qualification then you should choose the one who is from the less advantaged background. So, uh, this tie breaking is also a form of uh, reverse discrimination or affirmative action and so on. The third is handicapping. Handicapping is usually practiced in educational institutions or in clubs or so on where you increase the credit or the points to access certain institution especially for those who are from uh, the well off or from the uh, privileged uh, background. So, you keep the uh, points or grades or credits a little higher for those who are coming from the privileged backgrounds to ensure that the least advantage should also access and should have more chance to uh, enter into uh, the uh, public universities or so on in comparison to those who are coming from relatively better off or the privileged uh, backgrounds. So, handicapping in that sense is also one way of preferential treatment. Finally, which is widely known in India is the quota system or reservation where you keep certain percentage of jobs or public jobs which is reserved for people from disadvantaged communities and groups. Now, the basic justification for affirmative action is that it intends to compensate a group which is historically disadvantaged or suffered past injustices. So, it is a kind of measure to rectify the past or sufferings or past mistakes or past injustices. So, the justification for affirmative action or preferential treatment is it intends to compensate a group for the past injustices or the past sufferings they uh, suffered. So, uh, however, in society one of the uh, major objection 
against the affirmative action is that in it undermine respects. So, uh, the equality if you recall starts with the assumption that all individual are equal, equal in the sense of their moral worth and their respect for themselves or for the other. Now, the preferential treatment as it is practiced create a situation where the respect even among those who are from disadvantaged groups, but are talented are seen to be beneficiary of a preferential treatment and hence although he or she may have the talent is seen somewhat differently, not uh, due uh, respect is given to them. So, the affirmative action uh, runs this risk of dividing even the talented individual from their due respect or due acknowledgement on the one hand and it also creates resentments among those against whom these discriminatory practices are practiced. So, first this affirmative action undermines the respect even for the talented individuals from the disadvantaged groups and unleashes resentments among those who are discriminated against. In India, support and resentments against the reservation is a case in point to understand some of the moral issues involved moral issues involved in the question or issue related to affirmative action. So, on the issue of reservation and its extension to OBC in 1990s and uh, the uh, support and opposition to such mechanism is something which is a reminder to some of the moral issues that is involved in this uh, practices of uh, affirmative action. So, thus these policies involve certain costs which is present. So, those even with the talent are discriminated against not because they committed some past mistakes or they were involved in some past um, injustices against certain communities, but because they are seen from contemporary perspectives belonging to a group which committed certain injustices against certain community. So, first uh, the moral uh, question that is involved here is an individual is made to pay for the mistakes which he or she has not committed in the past. In the name of group, the individual member in the contemporary time is subjected to certain discrimination for the past mistakes or injustices that is committed by the other community. So, there are certain costs and the moral issue which is involved in the practices of affirmative action. The other point that we need to take into account is this is the temporary measures. Overall objective is to create a society which will be more equal and more just. Now, uh, the tendency with the affirmative actions are it may turn out to become a kind of self perpetuating mechanism where material equality may be achieved to some extent, but ethnic or caste consciousness among the individual becomes even more stronger. So, the whole idea of eradicating the caste or ethnic consciousness gets reinforced by this mechanism instead of eradication or creating a society which will be more equal treating people with respect or a general equality in the society. So, there are some of these issues which we need to take into account when we argue about this preferential treatment or affirmative action. Now, in conclusion equality of opportunity can be seen as a remedy to the pitfalls of equality of welfare and equality of resources approach. It also tend to create a society which may be more equal. In such a society, inequality per se is not regarded as bad if it is the result of individual innovations or talent. However, if such inequalities are result of capacities beyond individual controls, then the state has a role to ensure that everyone has equal opportunity to progress or to excel. Affirmative action or preferential treatment must be seen as a temporary measure to create a level playing field for everyone in the society, particularly the disadvantaged groups and communities. However, it should not become a self perpetuating mechanism and the moral issues and cost involved in such measures must be duly considered before we 
embark upon this uh, policy of affirmative action or uh, or discriminatory practices. Now, this is all on this idea of uh, equality of opportunity and preferential treatment. Some of the text that you can refer to is this, which you can read to understand some of the questions which we have discussed in this uh, lecture or some of the moral concerns which is associated with the idea of equality as an opportunity or uh, the preferential treatment and how uh, preferential treatment is justified. So, for that you can refer to some of these uh, texts. Thanks for listening. Thank you all.